Good morning. So good to see you here on this New Year's Day. Happy New Year's to you. I uh, hope you had a good Christmas, a uh, good time celebrating with family and friends, and a good uh, time celebrating New Year's. We're so glad we could begin 2023 coming together and worshiping together. We're so glad you're here, and we want to welcome those that are watching online, and so glad you can join us online as well. But if you're a guest with us this morning, we are just thankful to the Lord that you've come to worship with us this morning, and we want to get to know you a little bit better, connect with you. So out in the foyer, but also over in our Welcome Center, which is over to my left and your right, are some Connect cards, and if you'll just take a moment after the service to fill that out and then take it over to the welcome center there's a desk there someone will be at the desk and they'll be glad to receive that give you a free gift to show appreciation for you being here and we are just glad that you're here to worship with us we hope you feel welcome and part of the family here at red mountain and we are thankful the lord's brought you here this morning and if there's any prayer requests that you want us to pray for please write that on there or any questions you have you can write that on there as well and we'll be in touch with you but we're glad you're here uh, for worship and we're glad each and every single one of you are here for worship we had a good first service good time in sunday school and now looking for a good uh, second service of worship as we worship our great God. Uh, before I share a verse with you this morning, let me just take this opportunity to say thank you uh, for giving us the generous love offer you did for Christmas. And uh, we, you guys are so gracious to us and so loving to us and our families. And we are just thankful to God for how you care for us and how you uh, watch out for us and just love on us. And uh, thankful for how you're, uh, the offering you took. And we just give God praise for you and just, uh, just want to say thank you so much. And uh, we love you guys so very much and appreciate you so very much. Uh, let me share a passage of scripture with you as we begin a new year. This is something to be thinking about as we begin this new year. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know, oftentimes as we begin a new year, people do their New Year's resolutions and they forget about the bad things that happened in the previous year. and They're looking forward to something new. But, you know, you think about when you come to know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Uh, Paul says there that the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are new creations. You know, when we, become, when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are made new. Uh, the bondage of sin has been broken in our life, and God has blessed us with salvation and with a relationship with Him. And so as we live into 2023, just remember, you know, we are no longer bound to sin if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He has made us new. We are new creations in, in Him. And we're so thankful to God that we can live that way. And that's the God that we've come to worship this morning. The Lord Jesus Christ who has made all that possible. And we are thankful to him. So let's pray together as we begin this morning. Gracious Father, we just give you praise for how you love us and how you care for us, Lord. And Father, I thank you for each person that is here and each person that is joining us online. And we just uh, pray that you're honored and glorified this morning because this is all about you. Jesus, we thank you for how you have died for our sins and paid the penalty for our sins. And we place our faith and trust in you. We have forgiveness and have everlasting life. As it says there in 2 Corinthians 5, that we are made a, a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. As we enter this new year, may we be reminded of that, that we are a new creation in Christ. We don't have to live the old sinful way anymore. We can live the way that you've called us to live. And we are thankful that you give us the Holy Spirit to help us. You give us your Holy Word to guide us. And we are thankful for what you've done in our life. And I pray as we come together and worship you this morning that you will be honored and glorified. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Glad to see everybody out. Let us stand as we sing Joy to the World. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him through. And heaven and nature see, and heaven and nature see, and heaven, heaven, nature see. Joy to the earth, the Savior. Let me the song before while fields and floods, rock hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow burn, nor thorns in past the ground. He comes to make His blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the 
curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nation through the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders wonders of Good morning. As so we go into this time of uh, prayer request, I do have something to share with you and some congratulations as well. But I, I do want to just piggyback off of Pastor Dave and just say thank you guys so much for the love offering that you gave to Dawn and I. Uh, it's just a blessing for us and we just really appreciate how much you love us. So thank you guys for that. Uh, we want to congratulate uh, Mutt and Cindy Jeffries who celebrated their 52nd wedding anniversary on Wednesday. So we'll give them a hand. Just thankful for that and thankful how the Lord shows us each and every week how uh, marriage is uh, supposed to be. And we're just thankful for all he does through our marriages. Uh, and we want to be praying for uh, Miss Christy Murray. Uh, her brother passed away yesterday. So we want to be praying for Christy and her family in the uh, coming days and weeks. And uh, just that God would be there as their source of strength and comfort. And I want to be praying also for Miss Gail Bowen. Uh, Gail was admitted to Duke Regional Hospital on Christmas Eve with some respiratory difficulty. Uh, she has had some small improvements, but she is still struggling with that. So please be praying for healing for Gail and, and for the team of doctors and nurses that are caring for her uh, so that that would uh, continue to get better. And just uh, praying for sickness in general. I know we've got a lot of sickness out there and it's either coming or going and there's all kinds of different parts of it. So just pray for our, our church family and families involved with that uh, different sicknesses right now. And uh, just also just wanted to share with you, we're starting this new year and I, I just want you to uh, think about this this morning. How, how do you want to honor God in 2023? How do you want to focus on your walk with him and your relationship with him? And, and my desire is to be closer to God at the end of this year than I am right now. And to do that daily, to do what God's calling me to do. So what is God calling you to do? How will you glorify him and honor him this year and all that you do and your walk with him? Uh, just a great way to think about it as the, we come to the first day and we're in his house on the first day of the new year. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us together, Lord. And thank you for giving us opportunities to, to serve you, to love you, Lord, like you love us. To glorify you, God, and we pray as we go through this uh, time of service, the message you laid on Pastor Dave's heart, Lord, that it it's something that we take this week and we use, God, in a manner that uh, would glorify you, that we could reach others, uh, not only uh, today or this week, but this year, Lord, that we reach others with your love, uh, that you give us opportunities and we take them. We're bold to use them, Lord, because we know that's, uh, that's the goal for us, God, is to serve you and glorify you and honor you. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, you open our hearts and our minds now to hear your word. And we pray all these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Isn't it encouraging to see our children excited to go to children's church? <laughs> it is. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is what we're going to be look, looking at this morning as we dive into God's Word. But uh, let me take this opportunity to say thank you for praying for me. If you remember last Sunday at Christmas, I was getting over that cold virus I had, and I've been doing a whole lot better, and, and I'm improving. And if you know me, I hang on to a cough, and so I still have the cough, but but I uh, have had a better week this week, so I appreciate you praying for me. I know some of y'all have been sick, and so we've been praying for you as well. And as Pastor Cameron said, there's a lot of sickness out there. It's just that time of year where it's spreading, so uh, please let us know if you are sick so we can count it a privilege to pray for you. First Corinthians chapter 10 is where we're diving into this morning. I heard about a rich man who uh, wanted to buy something nice for his mother for 
her birthday. You know, she wanted, he wanted to give her a gift that kind of surpassed all the other gifts she ever received or all the other gifts that he ever gave her. And since he was a very rich man, he could pretty much get anything he wanted and give it to her. So he didn't live in the same state as his mother. So he had to buy something he could have shipped there. And so he got online and began looking and he came across this very rare bird that was very talented. This bird could actually speak 4,000 words. But not only could this bird speak 4,000 words, but this bird could speak in four different languages. But not only that, this bird could also sing. And his mother loved opera. And he found out this bird knew three opera songs that this bird could sing. And he thought, this is a great gift to give my mom. This is a great gift. She'll really enjoy this bird. And no, price was no issue. The bird ended up costing $50,000. Well, he bought that bird. He had it shipped to her house. It arrived a couple of days before her birthday. So since he wasn't able to be there, he called her on her birthday. He said, Mom, did you, did you get the bird? She said, yeah, the bird came. He said, well, what did you think? Did you, did you like the bird? She said, oh, son, that bird was delicious. <clears throat> Talk about a waste of $50,000, right? Needs to say that bird did not fulfill the purpose that that son had for giving that bird to his mother. But here's the sad reality in life is a lot of people don't realize the purpose they have in life. A lot of people never fulfill the purpose that they were born for, that God created them for. One person put it this way. There are two great moments in a person's life. The first is when you were born. The second is when you discover why you were born. As we begin 2023, I want you to maybe remember or maybe know for the first time the reason why you were born. What's the purpose of why you were born? Now, now I'm not being arrogant when I say this, but I can tell you the purpose of why you were born. You know why I know? Because God's word tells us. That's why I know. God tells us the purpose that he has given us in life, the purpose that each person has in life. Now, we may not all fulfill the purpose the exact same way, but we're called to live for this purpose throughout our entire life. And it's truly sad that a lot of people, a lot of Christians even, never realize this purpose in their life. A lot of people never fulfill this purpose in their life. So as we dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 10 today, we'll see the purpose that God has given us, the purpose for which we were born. Now, 1 Corinthians is, is you know, a pretty entertaining book. There's a lot going on in the book of 1 Corinthians. If you're going to take any book of the Bible and turn it into a reality TV show, you might want to do it with the book of 1 Corinthians because there's a lot of things going on that would make for good TV nowadays. I mean, some of the topics that are addressed in 1 Corinthians is there was drunkenness at the Lord's Supper. There was Christians who were suing Christians. There was incest in the church. I didn't say it was good things. I said there's things that were going on. But here in chapter 10 in particular, the, the, the debate that was going on is, could you take meat that was offered for idols and could you eat it? That's what they were dealing with. So with that in mind, let's dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want to begin there in verse 23 to kind of give you the context of what we're looking at. So if you're physically able, stand with me in honor of reading God's holy word this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in 23, says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake, for the earth is the, is the Lord's in all its fullness. If any of those who do not believe invite you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. Conscience, I say, not your own, but that of the other. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But if I partake with thanks, why am I evil spoken of for the food over which I give thanks? Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved." Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Father, this morning as we dive into your living, powerful, active word, may you speak to our hearts. We realize that we are not here by accident. Your word tells us that. We are your creation. You created every single person that's here, every single person that's watching online. But you also created us with purpose. Help us to realize what that purpose is and to examine our life this morning. To see if we are truly living out that purpose. And if not, then we'll begin doing so today. So we can bring honor and glory to you. So we can live a life of fulfillment. 
Father, speak to our hearts from your word through your Holy Spirit. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you empower me to preach your word this morning. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. You see, the book of 1 Corinthians was written to the, the Christians, the, the church there in the, book, in the city of Corinth. Now, to give you some context there, the city of Corinth was a very pagan city. But it was also a very religious city. But it was religious in the sense that it had a lot of different false religions that were out there. You know, all throughout the city, animals were sacrificed to all these false gods, really on many different street corners, if you think about it. And, and so, you know, all these false sacrifices were taking place, and all these people were worshiping these false gods, but the priests of those false religions were also very opportunistic. They saw that they could make money off of these sacrifices. So whenever the sacrifices were over, whenever their religious service was over and everybody left, what they would do is they would take the leftover sacrifices, take the leftover meat, whether it's, you know, something like lamb chops or, or New York strips or ribeyes, whatever you want to make out of that sacrifice. And they would go to the local meat market and they would sell that meat that was once sacrificed to idols. But everyone knew what they were doing. And that created a problem because everyone knew these were basically recycled sacrifices, if you want to think about it that way. And so what happened was a debate broke out in the Corinthian church. Should a Christian eat meat that they knew had been sacrificed to idols? Some said, well, there's nothing problem. There's no problem with that. It tastes just like any other meat. Others said, well, if you eat the meat that's sacrificed to idols, then what you'd be doing is you would be, you know, endorsing what they're doing. And people might think that you're worshiping a, a pagan false god. So what were they to do? So Paul kind of gives them this, this general principle there in verses 23 and 24. Look again what he says. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. What Paul is saying there is saying, look, you may be allowed to do something, but is what you're doing edifying to somebody else? In other words, is it building up their faith? Is it helping them grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ? And he says, look, he says, look, don't just do things where you're seeking your own interest. Don't just do things where you're just watching out for yourself. Instead, consider others above yourself. So how does one determine what is good for someone else? How do we know what, what we're to do and, and when we're to do it or when we're not to do it? Well, that leads Paul to make a very powerful statement there. And really, in one sentence, it gives us the purpose for which we were born, the purpose for which we were created. This is a purpose not just for, for the individual. This is the purpose for the church. This is a purpose for everything we do. Look what he says there again in verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That is our purpose in life. That is why we were created, that everything we do, we're to do all to the glory of God. So, how do we live in 2023? How are we going to live our lives day in and day out? Are we going to live our lives for ourselves? Are we going to live our lives where it's just our needs met and we're only, we're only watching about ourselves? Are we going to live in such a way that God is glorified? In everything we do. That's how we can live with purpose in 2023. So Paul gives us some action steps to help us live with purpose in 2023. And the first one you see there is that we need to strive to live for God's glory. If we want to live with purpose in 2023, then in everything we need to do, we need to strive to live for God's glory. Now Paul is dealing with a situation where, where, you, where someone wants to do the right thing. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But sometimes they may not be sure what that right thing is to do. And so here's a basic simple principle that Paul gives them. He says you're free to do as a believer what you can. But you're not always free to do what you want to do. Because it may basically affect someone else. You should always seek the good of others above yourself. What does that mean practically when it comes down to dealing with meat sacrificed to idols? Well, he says this on one hand, verses 25 and 26. He says, eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. But then on the other hand, he says this in verse 28. But if anyone says to you, this is offered to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you and for conscience. So sometimes you should do it and sometimes you shouldn't is what Paul's saying there. But how do you know the difference? How do you know when you should do it? How do you know when you shouldn't do it? And that's, that's, you know, what we have to decide is what is the right time to do it? What's the not right time to do it? What's good for others? What's not good for others? And that's where Paul gives us this principle. And if you know me, this is my life verse. This is our purpose for which we live. 24-7, we should be living this sort of way. Look again at verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. In everything we do, 
We're to do it for the glory of God. We need to strive to live for God's glory. So, so with the situation that he's dealing with, the, the meat offered to, to, to idols, false idols, he says, what you decide how to deal with that, you do it for God's glory. Does it glorify God? And we, we, we glorify God by how we treat others as well. You think about the greatest commandment that, that Jesus was asked about. That, you know, this lawyer came trying to trick Jesus up. And they said, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and strength. But he didn't leave it there, did he? He also said, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we're to love God and we're to love others. Is what it comes down to. And think about this. If we're striving to live for God's glory. You know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be living in such a way where we love God first and we love others. See, the problem is that we live in a society where we love ourselves first. We live in a society where, where the society teaches us that it's all about me. You know, have you ever met someone where they think the world revolves around them, that, they're, that you're here to serve their purposes? That's not how we're called to live as Christians. We're called to live in such a way that God is glorified. That means we love God and we love others. Now, what's it mean to live for the glory of God? That word glory there means something that is worthy of complete praise and honor. It refers to the greatness of God. It refers to, to how good God is, how awesome God is, that, that he alone is worthy of this praise, that he alone is worthy of this honor. Now, we need to keep a couple of things in mind as you think about living and striving to live for the glory of God. First off, God doesn't just deserve our glory, but God is glory. He's the one who is all glorious. He's the only being in all the universe who radiates glory. He's the only one that does that. Now, some people may think they're all glorious and they're the greatest thing ever. They're wrong. Only God is the one who's glorious. In one sense, he doesn't need us to give him glory because he already is glorious. But if we don't praise God, if we don't exalt God, if we don't give him the glory he, he, he is deserving of, you know what? He is still glorious. He is still good. He is still phenomenal. He's still awesome when you think about it. But we are called to live in such a way where we give him glory. We're to recognize his glory. You say, well, why is that? Because he deserves it. This simply because of who he is as almighty God. Stop and think about what God has done for each and every single one of us. How God has blessed each and every single one of us. God created you. You're not here by accident. Now, some people, you've heard me say this before, some people will tell you, some parents will even tell their kids that they're an accident. Friend, nobody's an accident. You're here because God chose to create you. You're a creation of God. And God created you with your pur purpose, as I already said. But God loved you so much that, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for your sins because we're all born as sinners. And Jesus died for our sins on the cross of Calvary. So we wouldn't have to die and go to hell and pay the penalty for our sins. God offers us everlasting life. God offers us forgiveness of sins. And when we trust Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. And he's there with us, guiding us every day, directing us every day, convicting us of our sins so we can get right with God and not have broken fellowship. But just think about how God has watched out for us and cared for us each and every day of our lives. We are truly blessed people. We met, you may think, wait a minute, tough, sir. times are tough, the economy's bad, and inflation's high, you know, things are more expensive. Friend, when you look around the world and what the world has compared to what we have, we are extremely blessed people. Extremely blessed. God reminded me of this this, this past week. We had, and I'm not, I'm not, please take this, I'm not bragging. We had a chance to bless someone this past week with this simple Christmas gift. Nothing major. And they simply said this. That's the best Christmas they've had in years. Just some simple stuff. And God said, Dave, see how blessed you are? Friend, God is so good to us. He is deserving of our glory. He is deserving that we live a life in such a way that we seek to give him praise and we seek to bring honor and glory to his name. But understand this, if we don't, we don't take away from his glory either. Our major purpose in life is that the way that we think, we should glorify God. The thoughts that we have that nobody else knows about, we should glorify God. The way that we talk, the words that come out of our mouth, when we talk to each other here at church, when we talk to our spouses, when we talk to our kids, when we talk to our co-workers, when we talk to the stranger, when we talk to the person in the other car who cut us off on 501 even though they can't hear us, we should glorify God. 
the things we do in public and in private, we should glorify God. Everything we do should exalt His glory, should give Him praise, should give Him honor because He deserves it. Another reason behind us always striving to live for the glory of God is we need to remember that it's not about us. I've already touched on this a little bit. Life is not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. So why do we do what we do? Are we doing it because we're seeking to glorify God? Are we, are we seeking to do what we do for who we're doing it for? We're doing it for God? It's not about us. Have you ever noticed this? If you ever take a picture with a group of people and they give you a copy of that picture, whether they email it to you or text it or give you a hard copy, what's the first thing you look at? You look at yourself, exactly. Because you're going to determine whether that picture is good or bad by how you look, right? There could be a hundred people in that picture and you focus in on yourself. Mm, that's a bad picture. I don't look good. And you haven't looked at the 99 around you. We're, 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 we're programmed that way because we're born with a sinful nature. We're, we're born with a selfish nature. But friend, when we come to know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, God gives us a new nature. As I read at the beginning of the service, we are a new creation and we don't have to live that way. See, we have to strive to make a decision to, to live for God's glory, not to live for our own glory. It's not about us. It's not about whether we succeed or fail. It's not about whether we have good days or bad days. It's not about whether we're rich or whether we're poor. It's not about whether we're healthy or whether we're sick or even if we live or die. It is all about God and giving glory to God. It's all about glorifying God and everything we do and everything that's going on in our life, and everything that we deal with in life. We should live in such a way where God is glorified. See, God's question is why? Why do we do something? Our question may be what? How, how we do something? The method of, why, of what we do. But God wants to know the motive behind we do something because that determines whether we're glorifying God or not. Think about it this way. If you give your tithes and offerings to the church, God's concerned about why you give it. Because, you know, sometimes we may give it because we're worshiping God. We may give it because we're supporting what God is doing. We may give it to, to reach people for the gospel of Jesus Christ. All things that glorify God. But if we give it only to get a write off on our taxes, that doesn't glorify God. Or think about me preaching up here. Why do I preach every Sunday? Is it so, so that people can come by and say, you know, that was a great message, Dave. You did a great job, Dave, and pat me on the back. Or do I do it to glorify God? God knows why I get up here and preach. Or if someone gets up here and sings. Why do they sing? So you can praise them about their beautiful voice? Or do they get up here and sing to worship God and to glorify God? God knows why we do what we do. He knows the reason behind we do things. And that determines whether we're truly glorifying God. He knows why we do. So, so when we do what we do, whether it's you know, a habit we practice or whether it's the words we say or the thoughts we think or the actions we take, why are we doing what we do? It's not whether it's going to make us money. The question is not whether it's going to make us more popular or more accepted or advance us up the ladder of success. We should be doing what we do to glorify God. That should always be the question before us. That should be the motive behind what we do. And notice Paul says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, we're to glorify God with. Paul takes the, the most mundane task. Paul takes the, the task we don't even think about, eating. We'll leave this place and some of you will go to a restaurant. Some of us will go to a house and we'll sit down and we'll eat. It'll be nothing to really think about. We don't even think to put food in our mouth. We just think about, you know, where we're going to go and what we're going to have to eat. Not much to think about. You pick up that glass of sweet tea or that glass of water or Pepsi or whatever it is. Not much to think about. But Paul says, look, if, with a mundane task, you're to glorify God. So if we're to glorify God with, a, with the simplest of tasks, with the mundane task, then we're to glorify God with the greatest of tasks as well. And all in between. We're to strive to glorify God in everything. Let's just look at our lives this morning. How are we living? Are we living in such a way that the thoughts we think, the words we say, the actions we take, and the motives behind them, are they glorifying to God? Maybe they are. I praise God if they are. But if they're not, maybe some changes need to take place in our life today. You know, January 1st is always a day that people start fresh on different things. I'm going to eat healthier this year. I'm going to exercise more this year. I'm going to get my finances in order this year. How about we get on track with the purpose we've been given to live with? 
to glorify God? Are we glorifying God in everything that we're doing? Are we striving to live for his glory each and every day? Are we striving to live for his glory each and every minute? Because really it's a moment by moment decision. Friend, if you want to live with purpose in 2023, a purpose that, that God is pleased with, a purpose that's fulfilling to your life, strive to live for God's glory. But there's a second action Paul gives us here that he tells us to help us live with purpose in 2023. Number two, seek to share the gospel. Seek to share the gospel. Now, Paul shares how the glory of God doesn't just benefit God, but it benefits other people as well. When you seek to live for God's glory, God is glorified, yes, but people around you are benefited. One pastor put it this way. He says, it's like the rising tide. A rising tide lifts all boats. And the more we glorify God, the more good we do to others and the more good we, we are for others. You see, when you strive to live for God's glory, then the greatest thing that you can do for anyone else, which will glorify God, is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Look what Paul says down there in verses 32 and 33. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. When it comes to seeking the glory of God, there's no neutral ground, if you think about it, when we, how we live our lives publicly. Because think about it this way. How we live our lives publicly, people are watching us, and either we're a stepping stone to take people to Jesus, or we're a stumbling block that gets people further away from Jesus. And if we're going to strive to live for God's glory, we're going to strive to do things in our life that we want to live a life in such a way that we're sharing Jesus with those around us. That we're seeking to share Jesus. We're seeking to share the gospel. And what he says there is when you live to strive to live for God's glory, you're not going to cause the Jews, the Greeks, or even those in God's church to stumble. You say, why does he pull out those three groups? Because those three groups, if you think about it, really cover everybody in the world. Biblically speaking, you're either a Jew or you're a Greek, or a Jew or a Gentile is another way to put it. That covers everybody when it comes to, to, to ethnic background. You're either a Jew or you're not a Jew. Or if you think about when you talk about the church of God, you're either part of the church of God or you're not part of the church of God. And let me clarify what that means. Being part of the church of God means that you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You asked him to forgive you your sins. It's not just that you were baptized. It's not that you just joined Sunday school or joined a church. But Jesus is your Lord and Savior. That makes you part of the church of God. And that's how God sees us. Either we're part of his church or we're not part of his church. And so Paul says we're to live our life in such a way that we don't cause anybody in any of these groups to stumble. So Paul points out that, that we should never be a stumbling block to those who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We should, never, we should never be a stumbling block in the way that we live and the way that we talk and the things that we do in our lives where it pushes people away from Jesus. Let's just be honest. If you're going to share the gospel with people, it's going to be offensive. The Bible tells us that the gospel is offensive. But the reality is... Even though the gospel be offensive and the way that we live our lives, live out the gospel in our lives, should not be offensive to people. They should see it as attractive. They should see the change that Jesus has brought in our life as attractive, that, that God has done something and, and, and people want what we have. They want the Jesus that we have. So we shouldn't be a stumbling block. We should be a stepping stone to help people get to Jesus. We also shouldn't be a stumbling block for people who know Jesus as their Savior, who are seeking to become more Christ-like. Because sometimes we can cause other believers to stumble as well in the way that we live. So we shouldn't cause people in the church of God, as Paul describes there, to stumble. That we should help them grow in their faith instead of you know, discouraging them, instead of tearing them down, instead of being a discouragement by the way that we live our lives. But what is the end goal that Paul is getting at here? Look again at verse 33. Just as I also please all men in all things, and not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Our number one desire should be for everybody on the face of this earth or, or, that lives on this planet. What he says there in those last five verses, last five ver, ver, words, excuse me, of verse 33, that they may be saved. Think about it. Nothing brings more glory to God than when we share the gospel of Jesus Christ and people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what we're called to do. God has called us to do that and that glorifies God. When we share the gospel and people respond to what God is offering. Because we know that all of us are born in the same boat. We are born, I said this earlier, we are born with a sinful nature. It goes back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were living in perfection. There was no sin in the world. And what happened? They were tempted. 
And they chose to sin. They chose to disobey God's word. And because they sinned, the Bible tells us their sinful nature was passed down to us. Adam sinned. And because Adam sinned, his sinful nature was passed down to every single one of us. So we are born as sinners. And because of that sin in our life, we can't have forgiveness of sin of ourselves. We can't earn it. We can't do anything to forgive our own sin. We can't have a relationship with God because God is holy. He can have nothing to do with sin. We can't go to heaven when we die because that's where God is and God is holy. Again, he can have nothing to do with sin. We can't have a relationship with God here on this earth because God is holy. So what's the solution? Jesus is the solution. That Jesus, God's son, came in this world and he took our place on the cross of Calvary. He lived a sinless life and he went to that cross and he died and paid the punishment for our sins so we wouldn't have to. And he was buried and he rose again the third day, proving he's the son of God. And he's offering each and every single person forgiveness of sin. He's offering each and every single person everlasting life. So when they do die, they can go to heaven and be with God for all eternity. But we must receive it. Just like you received that Christmas gift from your loved one. It wasn't your gift until you received it and opened it. Have you received the gift that Jesus is offering? Have you ever come to the point in your life that you've asked forgiveness of your sins? You believe in who Jesus is, that God's son that came and died for you, paid your penalty, and now he wants to be your savior, he wants to be your Lord, and you ask him to come into your life, to be your savior, be your Lord, that you trusted him with your life? Why not do that today? That's what the gospel is. That's what we're called to be sharing. Think about it this way. In the grand story of life, we're just minor characters. Now, some people think they're the star of the story. None of us are the star of the story. Jesus is the star of the story. Because it's not about us, it's about him. And our part in the grand story of life is that we make sure his story is told. We make sure his story is shared. That we strive to glorify God. And one way we do that is we seek to share the gospel with people around us. People in our family, people in, in our neighborhood, people at work, people at school, people wherever. Let me just ask you. Look at your own life. Do you seek to share the gospel on a regular basis with those around you? Do you desire to share the gospel with people in your life that you're not sure if they know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior? Friend, that will give you purpose in 2023. If you want to live with purpose, look for the opportunities to share the gospel. And there's one more action step that Paul tells us here. Number three, if we want to live with purpose in 2023, we need a desire to live as a godly example. That's the third thing he tells us, to desire to live as a godly example example. Now, even though there's chapter divisions here uh, and chapter 10 ends and we go to chapter 11 in the original text, there was no chapter divisions there. So chapter 11, verse one really follows well with the end of chapter 10. But look what he says here in chapter 11, verse one. It's a very powerful statement. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. I mean, that's an incredible statement to make, isn't it? Paul was so committed to living for God's glory. Paul was so committed to, to sharing the gospel with those, those around him. Paul was so committed his life to living for God that he said, look, follow me in the way that I live because I strive to follow the way that Christ lived. He said, I could be an example. Can that be said of us, that we live a godly example, that people can look at our life and say, hey, I look at that person, I see Jesus in them, so I'm going to try to live how they live. Paul said, I live like Christ lived, therefore you can imitate me. But how did Christ live? Now, I don't have the time to get into his 33 years here this morning, but let me just share a few scriptures with you of how Christ lived. Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus came to serve us. You say, wait a minute, that don't sound right. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. We should be serving him. Yes, we should. But Jesus came to serve us. He didn't come expecting to be served. He came to serve us. And he gave his life as a ransom for many. That's how he served us. He gave his life so we could have everlasting life. Look at the life of the Apostle Paul. Paul strived to serve others. He gave, he went through so much. He went through so much persecution. He went through so much heartache. He went through so much suffering to serve other people, to share the gospel with other people. Are we serving others? Are we faithfully serving like Jesus served? In John chapter 12, <coughs> excuse me, in John chapter 12, verse 46, Jesus said this, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Jesus came to bring people out of the darkness into the light. He came to be the light of the world. 
We live in a very dark-filled, sin-filled world, and He wanted to be light to pull people out of that lifestyle, to pull people out of that way of living. You look at the life of the Apostle Paul, he was a light in a very dark-filled world. Friend, we live in a very dark-filled world, don't we? A very sin-filled world. God has called us to be salt and light. We're called to be light, to shine the way of light so people can come out of the darkness and come into the light. Are we living that way? In Luke chapter 19, verse, verse 10, Jesus said this, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Think about this. Jesus came to seek after you. He came to seek you out. Why? So He could save you. That's why He came. Paul, throughout his ministry, he sought after people. He went to different cities seeking people out to share the gospel with them. Who in our lives are we seeking people out to share the gospel with? Who do we need to be sharing the gospel with? And then listen to what Jesus said towards the end of his life. He said this in John chapter 12, verses 27 and 28. For, for, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus came to glorify God the Father. He came to be obedient to the Father's plan, the Father's will. He wanted to bring honor and glory to God by the way he lived and by the way he died. Think about the Apostle Paul. Paul strived to live to glorify God with the way that he lived and with the way that he died. Are we striving to glorify God in every area of our life? What, Paul, what was said about Paul's life, can it be said about our life? Here's a very penetrating question to think about. Are you living for Christ in such a way that you're constantly striving to live for God's glory? That you're constantly seeking to share the gospel with people around you? That you're living as a godly example that your life pushes people towards Jesus instead of pushes people away from Jesus? That if someone was to come after you and start living the way that you're living, that you'd be okay with that? Because you're living like Christ lived. And that's how we're called to live. There was a man in the 19th century. He was a political figure. He was a diplomat. His name was Charles Francis Adams. And he kept a daily diary. And he made an entry every day. And one day he made this entry. Went fishing with my son today. A day wasted. Well, his son also kept a daily diary. His name was Brooke Adams. And on that same day that his father made that entry, here's what Brooke Adams wrote. Went fishing with my father, the most wonderful day of my life. See, the father thought he was wasting his time by fishing with his son. That he could have been doing something better. But the son saw it as an investment of time. You see, the only way that we can tell the difference if we're wasting our life or if we're investing our life in others is to know what our ultimate purpose is. Our ultimate purpose has been made clear in Scripture. We are called to glorify God in everything we do. Paul has shared with us the purpose of life. We're called to live with purpose. We're, we're called to live in such a way that God is glorified. How are you going to live in 2023? We're only one day into it. We're not even 12 hours into the day yet. January 1st, 2023. You can make all the New Year's resolutions you want to make. You know, you're going to exercise, you're going to lose weight, you're going to eat healthier, you're going to get your financial business in order, whatever it is. But what kind of eternal impact will those things make? Not saying those things aren't important. Because we should take care of our bodies. We should, you know, take care of our finances. We should be good stewards of the money God's given us. But that's not our ultimate purpose. Our ultimate purpose is to live for God's glory. Will you live with purpose in 2023? Maybe there's some changes that need to take place in your life for that to happen. And I encourage you to pray with God this morning and make those changes. Maybe in order to do that, you need to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In just a moment, we're going to stand, we're going to sing. I'm going to be down here at the front, and I'd be glad to talk with you more about that. If you want to come down while we're singing, I'd be glad to pray with you. I'd be glad to show you in the Scripture what the Scripture says about that. But maybe that's where you need to start, is you need to ask forgiveness of your sins and place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. But my desire for myself, and my desire for you, is that we just don't waste another year. That we live with purpose. God's purpose for our life. Father, we thank you for another year that you've given us to live for you. We thank you for how you've taken care of us in 2022, how you've blessed us tremendously. But now you've called us to, to another year. As we 
enter this year, just a few hours into it, we really need to examine of how we're going to live. So we don't waste our time. So we don't waste our life. You've called us to live with purpose. And I pray we desire to do that. Now for some, that may mean changes that need to take place. And I pray they'll make those changes this morning. For others, they're already doing that. And I praise God they're living for your glory. But Lord, I pray that it's continue to seek your help and your strength to help them to live for your glory each and every day. Maybe for others, they need to start with step one. They need to ask forgiveness of their sins and place their faith and trust in you, Jesus. I ask you to save them and be their Savior and be their Lord so they can live for you. So I pray they'll do that today. So as we stand and sing in just a moment, Father, whatever it is you're called us to do, I pray you'll be honored and glorified by our obedience. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing. As we sing, you respond as the Holy Spirit is leading you this morning. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be so I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Pastor Cameron is going to come and share some announcements with you. Well, again, if you're a guest, thank you for joining us this morning. We're always excited to just uh, meet you and greet you. And uh, we do want to get to know more about you. So please go over to our Welcome Center, as Pastor Dave said. They, they'll be waiting for you there. They do have a gift for you uh, there. And a reminder, our women's Bible study group will not be meeting this month in January, but they will be starting back in February. So women just make plans for February. And I'll start the new year off right with being involved in our missions. Come out on Wednesday night, January the 11th at 7 p.m. for missions night so you can learn how to be involved in the mission efforts we're going to be having coming up this year. And on Sunday, January the 15th, our men are going to be leading both worship services for Baptist Men's Day. So men, we need you. We need your help singing uh, in the choir and taking part in the worship services. So Wally Watson is going to be leading that up. So men, just uh, prepare and you can come sign up with Wally. Uh, and uh, believe me, we need every man we can get. So don't be worried about how you sound. Just be worried about making a joyful noise to the Lord. Come on, we need to, we need to sing together. And our next Men of Iron Bible study is Monday, January the 16th at 7 p.m. So men, plan on joining us for an encouraging time of Bible study and fellowship as we continue 33 the series. And also for men, the Forged Men's Conference is going to be at Antioch Baptist Church this year. It's going to be on Friday, February the 3rd and Saturday the 4th. The cost for that is only $15, which includes a dinner on Friday and breakfast on Saturday. So, man, uh, make plans to join us for that uplifting time of worship and fellowship and Bible study. And you can uh, uh, sign up for that over in our Welcome Center if you plan to attend. There's a sign-up sheet for there. And uh, just remember to check our uh, Christmas card mailbox over there for any cards that might be left over that you may have. 
And uh, a reminder also, as we've been talking about, we are continuing to collect for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions. And as always, every penny that is uh, given for that will be uh, go to spread the gospel around the world. And we do have specially marked envelopes at the offering boxes to give towards that offering. And our church goal this year is $3,300. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you for this message this morning, Lord. Thank you for uh, just loving us, Lord, and for giving us opportunities each and every day to show that love to others, Lord. Uh, let us take hold of that this week. I know you're going to give us uh, situations, God, where we can show your love and we can be helpful to others, Lord. We can serve and glorify you. So let us do that. Let us be bold, Lord, uh, and that all those things that we do glorify and honor you. We pray all this in your precious son's name. Amen.